welcome to a video by Stan's Auto Repair. <clears throat> uh, this video is talking about the TPS system on the Chevy Cruze. This also works on most other Chevys from the Tahoe, Suburbans, um, pretty much anything like that. Uh, now, this is a 2011 LS, so this is a base model, so it's not going to have all the features as uh, a LT or an LTZ would. Uh, this one does not have TPS, but it does have the system in it. So, I mean, but it's not activated. But the first thing you always want to do, um, this is located on the American side. So, if your steering wheel is on the opposite side, which would be our passenger side, this sticker would be on your side, on the driver's side. Not unless, you know, they're being funny. Um, but anyways, you want to go here and... This tells you exactly what tire size uh, your vehicle should have. And also it tells you the max pressure at cold. Not when the tire is warm. If you've been driving around a while, your, your PSI level is going to raise up. That is normal because the air molecules inside the tire get hot and they expand. Now when it's cold is basically when you want to check this. <coughs> okay. So... In a sense, all these tire pressures on this vehicle should be at 35 PSI cold. They should have a 2015-60R16. That's the tire size. That's what's regulated for it. That helps with fuel mileage, so forth and so on. But what we're going to do in here to, to check your TPS sensors, without going to the scan tool, you can kind of do a base uh, check yourself. Uh, you don't need to start the vehicle, but... Your TPS light, oh, let me do that again. Actually, I'm gonna shut the door. There we go, shut that chime up. But as you see, the TPS light came on. Okay, it's going through a check. Okay, ding's done, I could start the car, whatever, cause it's done checking. Anyways, so over here, press menu. Now you're going into the vehicle information menu. And see, there is all the TPS. Maybe this car does have TPS. I don't, I, I honestly, I don't know. Uh, because this was typically all at 30, but now it's saying 29. I guess I'll have to check. <laughs> but I was told from the dealer that I bought this from that it does not have the tire pressure system. But yet, the light pops up. So, duh, it should. Well, anyways, so all these are stating 29. That's about, I'm thinking about 6 PSI below recommended pressure. Okay, so if you don't got an air pump at your house, get your cold pressure. Figure out how many PSI you are missing from what you should have. Write that down and which tire it is. Then you can drive to an air pump at a gas station and put that amount of air in the tire even if it's even if even if this changed from 29 to 32 you could still put say it's only down six put six psi in there because then once the tires get cold again it should sit at the recommended 35 so that's how you get to it now the rest of this video is just going to be showing the other features within this menu you do have more options some cruises especially the newer ones past 20 uh, i'd say 2015 2016 the second generation because 2011 2015 is the first gen um there's more features like you'll have you'll be able to change the language um oh hold on actually 2014 has this the lt model i know because i had one uh you can actually change your miles per hour to kilometers. So, so right here we can go unit. This is for units. Press set control, which set control is oh, is this button right here. That is set control. All right. So now you can go in 
actually this car has that feature. So you can go to metric if that's what you use, or you can go to imperial. So we'll set it on imperial. Now we're gonna press menu and go back. There's trip fuel information. Speed is still at miles per hour. Then you got how many gallons you used, average vehicle speed, average fuel economy, and then your fuel range, and then your trips. Now, to, and then you also have navigation. This 2011 model, in order to have navigation, you need to have OnStar, which OnStar has discontinued service to any vehicle, I believe, 2015 and down. Okay, so, now, you can reset your fuel used. Press the set control and hold it until it beeps. Your average speed, you can reset that also. Your average fuel economy, you can reset that also. Fuel range, that's all done by the computer. Trip, one and two can be reset. Now back to vehicle information menu. So we're on Imperial. There is your voltage battery. There is your oil life. So as soon as you get your oil changed, press the set control and hold the vehicle should beep and that should go back to 100%. And then there's again, your tire pressure. Now I'm gonna go back to, hold on. So let's go to metric, go back here and see now it's in kilometers. Yeah, now, now I'm in kilometers. So if you are going to Europe, this is a great way to learn. If you're going to Europe, most of the countries in Europe are in kilometer, uh, kilometers. If you're in Europe and you're coming to the United States, you're used to uh, kilometers per hour. So what you want to do is you can set it. You can set this for you guys over there in Europe to miles per hour and then learn where you can see like you're going, uh, let's say... Uh, 20 kilometers per hour, that's roughly 23, uh, 24, somewhere in there miles per hour. That will teach you, you know, our speeds. Uh, vice versa, you're going over to Europe, you're going to be driving over there, you don't really understand the kilometers per hour. Um, you can kind of get a reference. So just in case you get a vehicle that's in miles per hour, for some odd reason, this does happen, and but it doesn't have kilometers per hour option, you'll kind of know the kilometers per hour and how it's used back and forth. Um, it's, it's just a neat little feature. So in a sense, I could take this car to Europe and drive it on the Europe roads. But my speedometer over here, it has... Uh, kilometers and miles per hour but the kilometers is small so it would be opposite over there the miles per hour would be on the inside and the kilometers kilometers an hour would be on the outside okay and uh so a lot of you may also uh not know um this is your gear selector indicator As you move your gear shifter, it changes. See, I can't see. That's when that's manual mode. Car's not running, so it's not going to go any higher gears. Um, but and then that is your direction. So right now the car is pointed southeast, and that is uh, kilometers. Um, that is uh, kilometers. So. In a sense, this car would have 259, 391 kilometers. So we're going to go back here because that, that changes everything. Go back here. We'll go to US. Go back. Now we're back to miles per hour, and this car has 161,178,000 ,000 miles. All right. So that is how you use the memory feature. Some will be on your turn signal indicator uh, lever. Some will be buttons down here. 
some will be buttons on the steering wheel some some gm vehicles that will be on the windshield wiper uh lever so that is the gist of the vehicle if and there are also some vehicles will have the ability to reset the compass um some like lt models and ltz models some of them have the ability to you'll have more tabs uh in the system and i do have a video on how to set your compass and your zoning so your uh directions and your navigation will all work correctly because each and every part of the United States is is in a different zone and each zone has its number. Like I'm in zone nine when it comes to uh, compass calibration. All right, so hope this video helps. If you made it to the end, uh, give this video a like. If this video has helped you, give this video a like, either or. Comment your questions down below. Um, I do respond to most every comment except comments that are silly pointless or don't really make sense i you know where i can't really understand it i do comment to different languages i use a translator uh i'll take your message i'll put it in a translator then i'll tran then i'll type my message into your language and i'll put it and i'll comment back in your language um it's a little more difficult but I try to comment to everybody possible. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I do have a membership feature right now. Uh, the membership feature is a way of you supporting my channel. Uh, maybe here in the future, you know, if I get enough stuff going on, because, you know, it, it takes subscribers, you know, putting their input into the channel to where I can in a sense, do stuff, uh, because we all know YouTube channels, 100% of the profits come out of the creator's pocket, unless he's getting sponsors, which I do not get any sponsors, and yeah, this vehicle does not have the Chevy MyLink, it has the base radio system, it doesn't even have the little usb auxiliary port which i was kind of bummed about but anyways uh thank you all for watching and remember if it's broke fix it